Hello everyone, it's Dr. Amin here. In today's video, I would like to uh, illustrate the differences between clenching and uh, proxism. The diagnosis and treatment to reduce failures of implants and other restoration like crowns, veneers, or bridges. Biomechanical stress is a significant fa factor in implant dentistry. It is directly related to force. So the increase in force will result in stress-related complications to all kinds of restorations. The duration and the direction of force may vary in each patient. So let's talk about each type of force. Biting forces could be perpendicular to occlusal plane. And these forces usually short in a duration. The brief total period is nine minutes per day. The force in, on each tooth is usually 20 to 30 PSI and the maximum bite force is 50 to 500 PSI. The perioral forces is the other type of force and it's more constant. It is lighter and it is horizontal. The maximum when swallowing, for example, is three to five PSI and the total swallow time per day is 20 minutes per day. The third type of forces is called the parafunctional forces and it could be due to proxism or clenching or tongue thrust. Proxism primarily concerns the, uh, with the horizontal, non-functional grinding of teeth while awake or sleep. It affects teeth and muscles, temporomandibular joint and the bone implant, prosthesis, any kind of prosthesis like uh, uh, veneers or bridges or implant crowns. They are not contraindicated for implant dentistry, but they need to be diagnosed before we start the treatment. To diagnose proxism, there are many signs. So if the patient has headaches, teeth wear, TMJ issues like uh, prominent temporal and masseter muscles, chipped and broken restorations or prosthesis, ab fractions, all these are indications uh, that the patient has proxism. I would like to also to mention that we can divide proxism into three types. The first type is mild, and um, in mild proxism, there is very minimal wearing of the anterior teeth. The second type is uh, moderate, and uh, there is obvious anterior teeth wearing but the posterior teeth are still not affected. And the third type, which is the severe proxism, the incisal guidance is absent and there is wearing of the posterior teeth. Now let's talk how to treat and prevent this from happening. So number one, I would do a thorough evaluation of the occlusion. Number two, I will remove any premature contact. Number three, shallow fossa, flattened cusp. That's the, the rule when we do any restoration. Number four, reduce the occlusal table as much as possible. Number five, removal, removable appliance, like removable appliance, uh, like night guard. They prevent nocturnal bruxism. Wider implant in the posterior teeth is always advised. Remove all posterior occlusal contact on lateral excursion. The last one is to plan to shallow the incisal guidance. Clenching is different from proxism. As when we talk about proxism, we said it is the horizontal force, like the force is directed horizontally. In clenching, uh, it is a vertical force uh, that goes through the long axis of the tooth with no lateral or horizontal effect. Thus, it can be considered of less damaging than proxism. Clenching increases the risk of mechanical failure, such as porcelain fracture, uncemented restoration, abutment screw fracture, or implant body fracture and crystal bone loss. The signs of clenching could be the same sign of proxism, though it is less uh, in terms of uh, teeth wearing, um, there might be some tender muscle with no teeth wearing, as I said. When you do muscle palpation, you can see that the muscle is slightly tender and there might be some deviation of the jaw uh, when opening or sometimes some limited mouth opening. The other important sign is a scalloped tongue. 
Now, how I treat these cases, number one thing we have to remember here, there, there is no incisal adjustment needed, like in bruxism, and no anterior or posterior guard needed. However, there is a special acrylic plate with self-resilient liner, which can be used to relieve the implant. And that's how we can reduce the force directed toward uh, the implant. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you would like to learn more, please visit our website at hightechdentalseminar.com. Thanks for watching.